you know, this is like a tale of two cities, two countries, two worlds. Uh, it's so hard. It's so hard to look at some of the news headlines in one respect and then see some of the earnings reports on the other. Yeah, that has the, that disconnect has puzzled me. I think what we're seeing is a lot of these positive headlines are coming from tech companies that are becoming more and more the fabric of our lives, even in a shelter in place. Uh, obviously, if you look at uh, the advertising businesses, those have been particularly resilient. Facebook's commentary about stability, I think, shocked uh, investors in the month of April. But I do see a distinction outside of my area of expertise. But if you look at what's obviously going on with airlines, hotels, this is still very real. We are not in the clear yet. I think these tech companies uh, will weather it better, will be in a much better place than a lot of other companies on the other side of this. But I do uh, understand this disconnect uh, and attribute it largely to just where our lives are going, more towards these tech companies. Right. Hey, John, though, let me ask you. I mean, one of the things is we, I think we expected to look at a Google or an Alphabet or a Facebook and, and say, this could be an interesting proxy in terms of advertising for other parts of the country, other parts of the economy. You know, we, we continue to talk about Barry Diller's comments on our air about two weeks ago, where he said, we're going to go from $5 billion in ad spend to a $1 billion in ad spend for the Expedia business. You hear about 100 million people in the world in the travel industry who could ultimately be out of work. That's not unemployment. That, that, that's, like a human, that's like a human travesty. So the question is, why are we not seeing those numbers filter, if, it's, if, those, if that's real, uh, through these types of tech companies, which you think would be affected, given that that's such a big part of the ad spend? Well, Andrew, I, I think in a weird way it makes sense, and here's my thought process behind it. For a long time, uh, through the last few years of this boom, we've seen certain big companies, uh, certainly in the stock market, but also in their revenue and profit, having an outsized benefit. I'm thinking of, you know, we, we talk about FANG stocks. And the reason for that was the idea that there was this whole new digital economy rising, this cloud economy, this subscription economy that was different from what was going on in kind of the older, more physical-based economy. And that was the justification uh, behind some of the valuations there and the rise. And I think what you're seeing here is this weird real-life test of that thesis, and it's actually bearing out. Now, it's not that these companies aren't being harmed at all, they are. If you look at Microsoft, they talked about their transactional business uh, actually being uncertain uh, and being hurt. But at the same time, you see Microsoft 365 doing well. You see Azure uh, doing well. Yes, the LinkedIn business was hurt because of the advertising slow down there, um, but you have other businesses that are making up for it. Xbox Live is doing well because people are at home. So yes, there are impacts in some of those areas of the economy that are particularly hurt. But then you have people surging toward at-home use of technology, at-home entertainment, and that provides benefit on another side. And then I think there's another factor here that we're going to see long-term beyond these results. I personally think that all of the focus on some of these big techs as monopolists and the push to break them up is going to take on an entirely different tone now that people feel that some of these companies and their technology and the way that they're structured in a diversified way actually help them to survive and help the society to get through this. I think that's why you see some of these CEOs, Mark Zuckerberg asserting himself more, it's putting them in a beneficial position. Right. Hey, Gene, in terms of investors out there trying to make sense of this, trying to figure out, given how, how fast the stock market has moved on so many of these stocks, ha have they missed the train? Would you still get in? And if you were going to, which ones would you pick? It's an easy answer for me. I think uh, it's Apple. And ultimately, if you fast forward, you talk about what John just mentioned, really important point there is tech has been under a lot of pressure for breakup. If you uh, really consolidate behind the best leadership around Apple and also the product roadmap, exiting all of this around not only 5G, but wearables, healthcare, wellness, uh, services, uh, the balance sheet that they have, the valuation. It's hard for investors to really wrap their head around one of the largest companies in the world getting much larger. But I could see this stock doubling in the next few years. And ultimately, this is the best uh, rest well type of uh, company for investors. I want to caution tonight's results for Apple are going to be messy uh, because their hardware piece, the June, if they even give guidance, is going to be messy. But again, if you look at the opportunity that for this company for the next five years, I think Apple is a far and above all the other tech companies.